it's, uh, it's my honor and privilege to be here today. Um, my name is Mike Almy. I've been very active in this, uh, this issue of repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell for the last six or seven months or so. I've had a lot of privileges and honors that have been bestowed upon me with this, in association with this repeal effort. Um, just yesterday, I shared a platform with Lady Gaga at her rally, uh, and I spoke alongside her and told my story there. And uh, the week before that, I escorted her to the Video Music Awards. And so I've, I've talked to her firsthand in, in private conversations, and I know how committed she is to this issue and how, how strongly and passionately she feels about repeal. We also have strong leadership like that in our Senate and in the House of Representatives. Senator Lieberman, Senator Durbin, Senator Levin, who's also put their full, war, their full force and their full weight behind this issue, behind repealing it, because that's how passionately they feel about this issue. Some of the other honors I've received this year, I, uh, I got to testify before the Senate Armed Services Committee in March and told my story there. Um, I spoke with Senator Lieberman uh, earlier that month when he introduced the repeal bill in the United States Senate. <clears throat> I've had no greater honor, though, beside all these, than serving as an officer in the United States Air Force for 13 years, leading some of the men and women in uniform, some of the brave patriotic Americans who put themselves in harm's way just to defend our nation, to defend our liberties and our freedoms. Freedoms that I myself was not allowed to fully enjoy because of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. In those 13 years as an officer, I did four deployments to the Middle East, the last of which I was serving in Iraq, where I was leading those men and women who were controlling the airspace over Iraq. While I was there, I wrote personal emails to family and friends just to keep in touch with them to ease the stress of a combat zone. Not unlike anyone else serving alongside me in my unit. They are straight alike. What I didn't know was that shortly after I had left Iraq was that someone had inadvertently stumbled upon my private emails, which I thought I had, uh, had deleted or had erased. This person proceeded to read them, raise them up to the chain of command, who, to the squadron commander who then ordered a search of my private emails. In Iraq, during the height of the insurgency, the Air Force ordered a search of my private emails just solely to determine if I had violated Don't Ask, Don't Tell and to use whatever evidence they could, they could find against me to throw me out. About six weeks after I had returned from Iraq, back in Germany where I was stationed at the time, my commander called me into his office. He read me the DOD's policy on homosexuality, and he handed me a stack of emails and said, how do you explain these? I refused to answer the question, even though the Air Force asked I was fired from my job on the spot, where I led nearly 200 men and women. A few months later, my security clearance was suspended, and I was forced to endure a grueling 16-month legal ordeal before I was finally discharged from the Air Force, despite never once making a statement to the military that violated Don't Ask, Don't Tell. On my final day of active duty, as an added insult, I was given a police escort from the base as if I were a common criminal or a threat to national security. I'm honored that I could play a small part in this repeal movement and to, to lend my voice and my energy and my story to this cause. But this isn't about me. It's about the 65,000 estimated gay and lesbian Americans that are currently serving in our military today. It's about the 4,000 who choose not to re-enlist every year because of this policy. And it's about the countless others who choose to never even join the military because they refuse to lie and sacrifice their personal integrity. I'm honored to stand here before you with these, these two great senators who put their weight behind this issue, as well as my personal hero, Eric Alva, who has sacrificed more than, than many of us can ever imagine. Of all the, the opportunities and privileges and honors I've had, as I said, there's none greater than, than the two I've served as an officer and a leader in the United States Air Force. And I greatly look forward to doing that again soon once the United States Senate stands with 80% of American people who support repeal. The time to end Don't Ask, Don't Tell is now, and I urge our senators to make that happen. Thank you.